how I used mixed media is a question I get so much and I personally think I'm very bad at teaching people how I do things. How I work is quite intuitive in that I just think, oh, I just feel like putting this down here. So I'm going to do my very, very best to try and answer that through just talking you through how I make a painting. So in this particular video, I'm going to be painting one of my originals for my original tier for Patreon. This is actually the first one so I'm going to be kind of working out things as I go through it because I won't have the other ones already done. So I thought it'd be a good time to like walk you through what my thought process is. I feel like I have no thoughts when I make art but we'll see. Um, so this is the colour palette that I want to base this off of. I love the colour palette. This is going to be a sticker for when I eventually open my shop. I don't know when yet. I loved the colours that I did in this piece here. I thought they turned out really nice. So I'm going to have this set to the side and use that as um, a bit of an example. I also did up a few thumbnail sketches of kind of how I want to lay out each four pieces. I think the hardest part for me about these original paintings is keeping them the same but different. But that's besides the point. We won't go over that now. So this is my palette. It's literally an old Termant Colour Soft pencil tin lid. Um, it's very... Well loved. I gave it a quick wash there, but I left the big globs of paint on it that are dried because I can reuse them. So for my most of the time when I do my painting, I use this. This is a Royal Talons Art Creation Sketchbook. But for my original tiers, because I don't want to just rip a page out of my sketchbook and end up giving something crappy to someone, uh, I use higher quality paper. So this is the Stramor Mixed Media. It is 300 yeah, GSM, 15.2 by 20.3 or 6 inches by 8 inches. I quite like this paper, but uh, I'm willing to experiment with others. So before I start, this isn't, I suppose you could say, normally part of my process, but I will just confirm that the paper I'm going to be sending off to someone as their forever is okay. And it's not like bent or anything anywhere because... Obviously, I want to keep these looking nice and good for people. So we're going to tape this down. Du, du, du. And someone asked me what tape I use. I, this is literally washi tape. It says, in feel me on the inside of it. You know, your basic flimsy washing tape. Washi tape, no washing tape. Uh, so I'm going to stick that down there. Like that. I want to make sure that they're quite lined up with the edges. And then, because I'm paranoid, I'm going to double up on the washi tape. So that it's both secure here and so that if anything spills, it doesn't get in on the sides and ruin the nice border that I've made along. Um, so it's just a bit of extra security. It also looks quite nice. Let's display it out like that. I paint directly onto my desk. It's a very dirty kind of scratched up desk, but I don't really mind because it's for working on. Not everything has to be pristine. So with that, my paper is prepped. And now I'm going to move on to squeezing out my colours onto this because I've given this a fresh wash. Normally um, I just take a look at what blobs are on it and what colours are already on it and then just add whatever I think is needed. But in this case I'll probably um, add all of my normal colours and then if I feel there's any colours that I'm missing as I go I will add them as well. So. I'm going to set this to the side because I don't want to ruin this. So when I gather my paints, I kind of have a palette that I just generally work off of. But I also um, have other colours I use frequently. I will always use a white for mixing. 
then I have a warm yellow. I just prefer warm yellow tones in general. Uh, I have a cool toned blue, a dark warm toned blue. I have a hot pink. Um, and I have like a lighter warm tone brown and then this is kind of like a dark cool tone brown. And then this isn't actually black, but it's very close to black. It's a um, black lake. I don't know, can you see here? You can see it's a blue tinted black. So it's not black, black, but I mix this if I want to get very dark, deep colors. So and I always use this, you can see here, uh, it's a blob of kind of olive green, but I already have a good portion of that out along with red and orange. So I'm not squeezing out anything else. And I have this um, uh, bluish green as well. So I'm not squeezing out any more of that, but I need more black. My black doesn't actually close it's very it's, I don't I'm not the biggest fan of this paint because it's really messy but we'll leave it at that and I always put them back because I'm quite you know about being tidy um squeeze it oh like a little ring around you let's get rid of that squeeze it on this brown it's almost like a greeny brown it's a bit weird but I like it Dump that one. It didn't go anywhere. Uh, and then this, it's Prussian blue. It's a lovely warm dark blue. I use it all the time. It's like my go-to blue because you can make it quite light and you can make it quite dark as well. So we are big fans of that blue in this household. Then have this warmer tone or lighter kind of warm brown. It's sienna, no? Yeah, bright sienna. Uh, yeah. And then this is phthalo blue. It's a lighter blue. Nice for mixing kind of like lighter sky colors and stuff. I'll put you away. Then I have, I always go through my yellows so quickly. This is permanent yellow deep. So I'm gonna give a huge blob of that and then another smaller blob there because It'll get used a lot. I tend to use woeful amounts of yellow. Woeful, woeful. Then we have my beloved pink, which is almost gone, but I have a backup of a similar pink in Holbein. Holbein? Holbein? So a nice big blob of that there. <clears throat> and the nice thing about gouache, one of my favourite things about using it is that if you don't use up everything on your palette, it doesn't go to waste. That's like my favorite thing about gouache is that I don't have to worry about squeezing out too much. I already have a big blob of white here, but I'm gonna add more white because I'll use a good chunk of it. And like I said, you can always reuse it. I am an idiot. I, I, I stuck this down onto the table in portrait while I'm painting this landscape. So we're gonna, Heal this bad boy up. Never done this before, so we'll see if I mess up my paper or not. But I think we'll be fine. So we're gonna just shmoosh, shmoosh, shmoosh. To begin with, we're going to sketch. So to sketch, I use a 4B pencil. I'm not picky about pencils, I just kind of like softer pencils, that's just all, but like it is, you can hand me any pencil and I'll probably sketch it, so yeah. Um, we're gonna do a landscape, shockingly, and it's gonna have a fence, shockingly, and I might throw in a sheep there, shockingly. <laughs> I'm gonna sketch out, and what I do with my sketches is that they're, they're rough guidelines for where I know to put colours and paint. They're, they're not like ever detailed sketches. They're just, it's literally just like a memory aid essentially. An idea of where I'm putting down main colours when I lay down my gouache. It's not a very important step, it's just a bit of a step that aids me quite a lot. Um, and obviously don't take like everything that I say in this video as like gospel because it's it's not, this is literally just how I do it. I don't have any formal training in art. I don't have any anything beyond um, 
secondary level education, which is equivalent to high school. Nothing I do is that important. Just, just keep that in your head. If you lay down the most detailed, beautiful sketches ever before you do your painting, then more power to you. I, that's, that's how you do it. This is literally just how I do it because people are curious. Um, so yes, don't, don't think that this is the only way to do mixed media painting because it's absolutely not at all. Um, okay, so sketching the sketch. So it's gonna be broken up like this, I think. Um, we're gonna have fence. It's gonna kind of go off like this. You're gonna have some plants and stuff in the foreground. There might be some bushes here, and then you're gonna go off rolling hills into the distance we're gonna have some trees here and then we're gonna have little little dots maybe of sheep grazing and then this is gonna be sky so no joke that's that's what my sketches look like that's literally it two seconds of where I want things to be um yeah when I say it's not that deep that's what I mean um, so thank you pencil for your time last ones you would have seen me done in my other video I had a very hot pink background but I want these colors to be a bit so I want it to be sort of a, a misty nearly morning kind of vibe so I'm gonna take some white with my pink and mix that in there but I don't like when it's just pink like this so I take a teeny bit of yellow warm yellow and mix that in there and now it's a kind of a yellowy pink so these two are how I make like most of my underpainting colors so I'm just going to water that down a bit with the water and then straight down onto my page and as you can see I get endless amounts of cat and dog hair on my paintings and um, they all come off before they get sent to whoever gets them for the original tears, so don't worry, you're not um, at risk of finding any errant hairs. Um, so that's it. I'll lay this down and keep on going with it. Keep on keeping on. So I've basically run out of it now, so I'm just gonna mix some more and get more dog hair off my paintbrush. So taking some of the white, Plopping it there, taking some of the pink, mixing it in, a little more white. Because I don't want the colour to be like too intense. Oh my god, I added way too much. Yee. Okay. Right. So we're going to take a big, bigger, I'm going to get my wetter white because I just need to add a decent bit more. But you know what the really nice thing about this is, is that this is literally just the underpainting, so the inconsistencies in the colours here really will not matter at all. You can see that's a lot yellower when I put it down, so I'm going to add in more pink and more white. It's almost nice that this turned out this way because um, the foreground will have bolder colours than the background. But like I said, this is... And then we have to brush all, oh my god, I feel like ashamed of myself, but I'm sure if you have animals, you understand that their fur is inevitably everywhere. But yeah, the foreground is going to be um, more bolder in its colours than the background, because like I said, I want it to be kind of fade out, like you know in the summer mornings. So now I can go down and start laying down my main colours and so we're going to continue with the sort of the pinky sky <clears throat> but I want the pink to fade down into like a blue colour towards the bottom and then that'll fade into the greens so I'm going to take some of this I'm going to take more pink because that's how we get closer to blue um, I'm going to wet my brush here and I'm going to go over 
just like that. And I'm going to add more white to blend her out. And then I'm going to switch to my round brush because I get more blendability. That sounds like a lot of crap. I just, that sounds like words I made up. Um, annoyed. I don't know where this blue streak came out of. And um, I want to make this paler. And I want to add more yellow because I feel like that's not coming through enough. Oh no, way too much yellow. Ah. Here we go. Now there's that kind of like mix. And then we literally just tap. And by tap I mean tap. Look at how little blue is on that. That much blue. And I'm gonna mix it in here. And then we're gonna start tapping more, mixing in more. And we're gonna start pulling that through here. And now that's loads of blue. And more dog hair. And now I'm afraid it's getting a little bit muddy, so here's where I fear. So we're taking some pink and some blue, making this nice purpley color. More pink. More blue. Okay. I'm gonna dry off my brush and then once my brush is dry I'm gonna blend all of this out a little bit. And I am slightly unhappy with this gradient that I've done. I feel it looks not amazing. But there's going to be something at the end that will probably save the fact that I don't like this the most. So now I'm going to go back in here. We're going to switch out to nearly full on blue mixed with white, but we're going to take in a little bit of green there. And this is how we're going to start puddling the green of the fields. Just like that. If you can see now how it's going to be like very pastel, light, greeny blues all around. And like, keep in mind, these are the first layers. That's way too much blue. I'm gonna knock some of that off. And then as we come down here to where my grassy foreground is, we're gonna have darker and darker colors. And now, where our foreground is, we're going to get much more heavier with our paint. So some of this lighter blue, some of this olivey green. And I want to add yellow as well. Because it's not yellow. I don't want it. I want to add more yellow because I, I really like like heavy on the yellow. There we go. Yeah. So like as we go into here, and I just kind of go mad with the brushes. I don't like go very technical. More hair. Nothing is safe. I'm gonna take more of this blue, but then I'm gonna take more. See how like deep and dark that blue is. Ugh, I love it. And I'm going to go in here, mix this. This is where I start feeling like I get bad at explaining stuff because I'm literally just mixing colours and seeing if I like them and then starting to lay them down. And I do like that. I love cool blues mixed with like warm yellows. So what I want it to be is that like, you know, you have your, your kind of like, it's almost as if there's light kind of coming through in this section here. And then it will get really kind of like darker, kind of as you come more into the foreground. 
And more hairs. Oh my god. Um, like I said, my explanations are not always the clearest. But I think you can kind of get what I'm trying to say. I don't know. This could be the world's crappiest video. But yeah. This is literally just the initial layers. And I feel like I need more warmer tones mixed in here. So we're going to aim to do that. Now I want some dark, 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 dark ones. Let's do some of this. I'll make it even darker. And then what I like to do to make things like super dark is steal some brown. And that gives it like a really deeper, deeper tone. So I just do these kind of fun shapes. <laughs> and the award for the worst explanation goes to the hair on my paper. So you can kind of see it's starting to take shape just a little bit. So I think I want some kind of minty, minty greens, but with yellow to take up more of this like background. And we want to, I'm going to wet my brush a little bit because it's not going down as smooth as I want it to. And now I want more bluish greens going over here. And we want even more blue to kind of come up here. So you can kind of really see how the sky. I like that kind of nice gradient, but I also, one thing I really like seeing in people's art was when colors aren't fully blended. So let's say I like adding in colors that I've used in other parts into like, the more like darker parts, like taking these lighter yellows and blues and adding them in and I'm just kind of I work with the fact that my brush is a bit old and scraggly and I let that kind of help me along a bit if that makes sense I feel like it isn't I feel like I'm absolutely talking the biggest load of crap but let's hope you don't think that so I'm taking more of this yellow and I'm going to take more of the green and mix it with the yellow because I feel like there's just too big of a contrast between like where the yellow starts and where the dark green starts. Um, so we're going to mix it in a little bit. And then I want to just take some really light yellow by itself, but maybe mix it with a tiny bit more white and green. There we go. And more hair. When will it end? And now we're going to start throwing this down here as little beeps, little beeps, beeps. Um, you're probably thinking this isn't making any sense at all but it will it will give me time give me time so now i'm mixing kind of the same color as the mountains in the background here and i have oh that's too light and too watered down i want it to be bluer and darker so let's see here no i want it bluer I'm going to have more blue and more white. I'll thicken her up. So this is it. And I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to more things. 
No, more blue. There we go. That was the one I wanted. So, these are going to be like the trees that we were kind of alluding to earlier on. I'm going to make it darker again. And darker again. We're just going to do bloops and plops. Bloops and plops. We're going to do more bloops and plops here. It's like kind of your, you're kind of cresting over a hill a little bit here, I think. And we might do even more bloops and blops. I'm going to tap out some excess water. I'm throw in some there. And some here. Just so like maybe the hill goes down a little bit over there. And then we're going to say that maybe, maybe with bushes on this side in general, just kind of get like overall like kind of thicker and wilder. And like you can see, my original sketch is is gone. There's no there's no more trace of that anywhere. But because I had it for when I was laying down my initial colours, I know what I'm doing now. If you get me. 90% of me painting is taking dog hair off of things. Um, okay. Now, I'm possibly, will I? Yeah, I will. I'm going to I'm gonna take the light blue, keep it down there. I'm going to take some of the white. And I want to make them very, very, very slightly blue. So I'm going to be even more whiter than that. And So, we said we're going to add in some sheep, so we're going to add in some sheep. Give me the sheep. Sheep both stay kind of scattered, but generally stay around each other because sheep are I want to be mean, but she's very dumb. It's like, so, yeah. You live, in, you live in rural Ireland and you guys. There we go. So, that's the bodies of the sheep laying there. Doing their thing. And now we're going to do fun bits. So, I feel like this is something that people tend to like. So, I'll show you here. I'm kind of roughing up this brush a bit, fanning it out. It's kind of all scrunkly. <clears throat> and now we're going to go in at white. And we're going to take some of this concoction that we made earlier, the kind of the purpley pinky. And my brush is now really dry. And now we're going to go and we're going to do big swoopies. Because this is pretty much dry here. So if I do do big swoopies, it won't be. That wasn't. That was too similar. So we're going to go in nearly white as well. Most of the time when I do do big swoopies, I do them in like nearly white. And they add like, this is basically just like dry brushing, do you know? And we're going to let that, oh, I shouldn't have done that. We can fix that with pencils. This is basically just having fun. With the blue is nice. Take more of that blue. Oh, I messed up. We got some green in there. That can be covered, it's okay. The most important thing of all is to not take any of it too seriously. Because if you put pressure on yourself to be great at all of this or amazing at all of it, it's not gonna not gonna go well for you. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking all these kind of like lighter colours here and I'm gonna mix it with white. And I want it to be yellowy so it'll stand out more against this blue here. And then we're gonna I'm gonna swoop it across. Swoop. 
swoop the hairs off. And every time I do this, I'm, dr I'm drying off my brushes a lot because <clears throat> I don't want my brush to be at all wet because then you don't get like the textures as nicely. Um, so, so I like kind of smash it in here. You can see like when you smash it, it kind of separates all out. And like, I'm sure this probably isn't like the greatest thing ever for your brush, but I've had been painting with this brush for like three years or something now, and it's done me really good. So I cannot get mad at it. And it was a fairly cheap brush as well. So, you know, don't be too worried about being overly gentle with these things. Because get in there and have fun. So the most fun you ever had when you were painting was when you were a child and you weren't worried about being good at it. Unless you're like me and you were like incredibly high strung anxious child and you were worried about being perfect. So I like doing this one. It's a big sort of like geometric swoop. The swoops are the fav are my favorite part. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna go in here for some darker swoops. But we still have the yellow on the brush because it didn't wipe it off. Okay. So I think that that is the main colors down. So I am going to let this sit here and dry completely. And I will say goodbye to you in this camera because we're now done with the paints and we're going to catch back up with this camera once this is dry and then we will go in with, as you can see here, I have them all ready to go, my pencils and my mixed media stuff to go on top of it. So yeah, this is the aftermath of the palette and I'll just let these sit here and dry. Or okay, so welcome back. I have had my lunch and now I'm having tea. You might hear the dog crying in the background. So this is, I'm just gonna make sure my hands, it's all dry now, pretty much. Um, it's damp in places, but it's good enough to start on. I think this was the wettest corner, so I'm gonna leave this corner to last. Um, sorry, I need to get a better stand for filming. Uh, so basically now I'm gonna go in and do my mixed media over top of squash. So materials I'm going to be using for this piece. Uh, this isn't everything I always use. One thing I might do to <clears throat> soften up and to kind of emphasize the mistiness that I was kind of trying to go for is use my pan pastels. So I'm uncertain which color I'm leaning towards this one. But if you lay pan pastels over top and blend it out, they can add a nice sort of misty effect. So I'm thinking I probably will use this one, but these are backups as well in case you change my mind because all three colors do sort of match what you see in the sky. But I think if it's going to go into the greens, I might use something that has a slight, sorry, the cat's just gone off beside me, slight green tone because it'll look better over top of the greens here than the grayish white or the pink will. So pan pastels. Next uh, is the main thing is pencils. So loud. Pencils. This is likely all the pencils if not more than this that I will use. There's three main brands. They are, we have them here. We have the Holbein Artists Coloured Pencil. That's brand number one that I use. And then we have, probably like a ride or die nearly, is the Caran d'Ache Luminance Pencils. They're super nice as well. These are the Prismacolor Premier Pencils. These are the ones I probably use the least. It probably goes um, from least to most used. It goes Prismacolor, Holbein, and then Caran d'Ache. Holbein are kind of like a new favorite of mine. The current dust is just kind of the winner for laying over everything. Uh, and then another one that I also use, which technically isn't a pencil per se, it is the Conte à Paris. It's a pastel pencil. So this is like 
can you see here? It's a chalk pastel. You can even see like a mark on my hand with it. So it's not like, you know, a, a pencil. It's in pencil form, but it's a soft pastel. And I really like these for adding details on top, especially pops of color details, which is what I'm going to use with this one. So that's it for pencils. Then in terms of other things, crayony type things, uh, we have our, these two colors are probably going to be main ones I'm going to use. It is the, um, it's ochre and ultramarine. These are the new color twos by Karen Dash also. Uh, these are the two ones I'm going to use for this one. And I might bring out more. I have just a small set of these that I'd like to use. Then for oil pastels, I have this chunky boy. Um, this is, I wish I had this in a smaller one, but I only have it, I think I have a massive one. I may or may not use this, I'm not 100% sure yet, but this is a lovely colour. It is the, the name is kind of scratched off of it here. If you're French, you'll be able to see it, but it's Cinnabar Yellow Bronze is the colour of this one. This is a massive one, but it's an oil pastel, it's really nice. Yeah, no, I really like adding our green kind of, I'd love adding it on top, but it's so chunky that for a small enough piece like this, I'm not sure if I will, but we'll see. Then the other types of oil pastels that I use are the Mungyo Gallery oil pastels, and they are very nice, and they're not that expensive either. I do prefer the Senelier ones, but they are dear and I have a nice kind of set of these so I have a nice range of colours of these ones. Um, the difference between them I would say is that these are a lot softer and buttery and then these ones are harder. But I really like using kind of like the flat edge and dragging it along, especially on a paper like this that's slightly textured because then I can get like really nice textures. <laughs> Uh, and then this is a, this is just another Mungo, Mungo Gallery one, but the nice thing about this is that I'll take this like flat side and I'll drag that along and then you can see I've done it here slightly um, and it adds a really nice like texture and it almost mimics kind of like tiny little flowers. So that's my setup for the materials I'm going to use. It is a fairly accurate representation of what I would normally use in most of my mixed media pieces. So in my initial sketch I had a fence going across here. I think I will but I don't think I'll make it as big as initially. I think initially I had it quite large but I think now I might make it smaller because if I make it as large as I have originally intended to I think these sheep will get lost a little bit. So. <clears throat> I'm gonna just go in and see yeah. So that's what I meant like earlier on when I said that when I do my initial sketches they really are just to understand where I put colours because a lot of the times when I, um, you know, paint or whatever, it takes on a mind of its own, sort of. It really kind of gets its own idea of where it wants to go and what it wants to do. So. I'm gonna keep when I do little lines like this I want to keep my pencil very sharp because if she does not be kept sharp we'll lose all of our nice details. So you can see here I stopped this one down because I didn't want to get rid of this because I think this acts as like a natural kind of border nearly. And then Try and bring that one up a little bit there. Okay. 
so that's our little fence down and then so that's a warm brain i'm gonna leave that there i'm gonna go in and do our little details on our sheeps a tiny little heads This guy is going to be crazy. This guy is also going to be crazy. <laughs> they look so cute when they have heads. Um, this guy is going to be looking straight ahead. Oh no! So, in situations like that, we'll come back and I'll fix that one later on. Um, I try not to be too distraught about it all. These are two who are standing beside each other, so I'm just going to add something to define between the two of them. And then this guy's going to be over here. He's a lone sheep. All by himself. Okay. And then, because I want to start tying in the light blue colours, add some shadows underneath. Okay. Now. So you saw here I messed up slightly, so I'm going to take this one. Hmm. Go over it. I can't see so much and I'm gonna go over it again here so that we can really define it. Yeah, that's the that's the details done. Now we're going to get into the fun bits, which is going wild and scribbling. First, uh, I wonder will I... No, I'm going to do this after I have everything laid down. I might decide not to run with the pan pasta altogether. So we'll just play by ear for that one. Basically what we're going to do here is we're just going to start going wild. Start adding bits everywhere, and then I tend to just add like one color at a time. Nearly that, like once I pick up this color, I'll just look to see wherever I think it will work the best. And there really isn't a rhyme or reason to where I think things should go. I obviously want little plants to be sticking up in the foreground. I tend to move it to a different side after I've done using it, so I don't like overuse a certain color and get confused between what's what. But I like adding all of these little um, details in here. Add more of that up there. <coughs> so I tend to stick with like a lot of the same categories of colours. So I just do little bumpy bumps. A lot of times I do a little Circle six out of all. It's nice to add like definition of like where a border might be a stuff low. Um, and then maybe I might add some little shadows of where the sheep are. That's a little bit more sort of like realism to an extent. Because we're not about realism here. We're about having fun. <laughs> Sounds so silly. And I like to just literally go with it and see. Like I said, this is the part that's hardest to describe for me. I just see where I think it would be nice if I put a certain colour. And then I go and I put that colour there, you know. I'm 
And then here I'm gonna have a tree. So I wanna throw down some branches. This is like my favorite part of every painting I do, is putting down um, the branches. Uh, another thing that I tend to do is I tend to lay down my colors or lay down like my medium in a certain order. So generally pencils first. Um, in some cases it will be things like pastels, like my pastel pencils because um, the reason for that is that these won't go over where there's pencils but I tend to just do pencils anyways as more of like a habit but if there's like a certain area I know I want to put these I'll put these down first but I kind of just let where I put my pencils dictate where I put these afterwards. I think maybe that's enough for that one. So I'm gonna go in here and just throw it down wherever I want to. I tend to put pops of colour sort of like at edges a lot of the time. But like look how nice that glue is. You can see, I'll show you now here. You can see how it just skips over where I put that. But I almost like it because then you can just like add it as like a background to certain things. And then I like adding it to like trees. More stuff over here. You can like have you come down like that. So some of I think uh, this one is a similar case and that like we'll just do big pops of colour and so we'll just get that we'll across here. With it. Then <laughs> I think we'll do this one. This is like one of my favourite Prismacolor pencils. It's the jade green one. I love this one. Oh no, that's the one thing about Prismacolors. Is that they'll just they'll break so much I find versus um the likes of Holbein or the Karen Dash ones. They break an awful lot. They're very delicate sort of pencils. And like I am not very delicate with my pencils. So yeah, I'm just going over here adding just to patches where I think it should be. I think this colour particularly goes really nicely with like kind of yellowy, ochre type colours. Oh, such a nice combination. Do some over here, maybe as well. Mm. And then go in with some brighter pops of blue as well. Pops of blue are just like my one of my favorite things to add. The moment it's pops of blue. And then this one. See, I feel like I'm so much more quieter now. It's just because I'm just like having fun. And I'm thinking these circles down here might act as like flowery bits. It's just gonna wanna give the vague impression that like this is kind of a meadow. Um, These, I guess, are like, you know, these are our stems for these flowers. Mm. I'm not the big, biggest fan of that blue that I did there, so I'm going to go in and cover it up. 
And this is where the magic with this one happens. It just kind of gives it a lovely atmosphere. Oh, that sounds like such a little crap when it gives it a lovely atmosphere. Um, but it does, I like it a lot. And then it just kind of go in scribbly bits. I love some scribbly bits. More pops of blue with the oil pastels. And I wonder if I can give it a chance doing some slight brushing with that one. So I'm also going to breathe in. Perhaps not, perhaps with this. Yeah. Okay. So I feel like we've added some really nice details there, but I feel like what we lack is darker colours, especially in these sections here. So I'm going to pick up my darker shades and I'm going to deepen up this corner here and a little bit here and maybe over there as well. Dark flatalo in green. <laughs> the dark is the dark. But hello, signing green. And it's a luminous by Carnage. That's it. The number is 719. That's probably an easier way to remember. Yeah. So I'm going to go in here now and just deepen up certain sections because I feel like. I feel like contrast is something that I, I really lack in a lot of my work. Sometimes, some, sometimes I get comments from people saying, oh my god, the values are so good. And I'm like, what? You like the values? I think the values are crap. It's almost very complimentary when somebody says, oh my god, your values are so good. And I'm like, oh my god, thank you. I think my values are shit. Um, and then you can see I've gone over the, the tree branches here, but... I don't mind as much because I'm probably going to do this afterwards. Go over them with this ochre shade and that'll bring them back out and into focus. And then for these ones up here, my them um, add in these darker greens. As well, just to give a bit of some some. Lighter blues as well. I feel like we're missing some of these lighter blues in this corner. I might go in here. That one, or this one perhaps. That one perfect. Okay, I don't want to overwork it now. Um, so we're gonna go. We're gonna go in with our sky colors. Yay, sky colors, which are gonna be all these ones. Now, for sky colors, they tend to be very subtle, and I prefer them to be that way. here and then some more. I want to like soften that one out and not make it so I'm pulling more of this as well Finally, this is a nice soft white. I like to use quite a lot. Yeah, that corner was a bit too dark for me, so I'm glad I got that lightened up a bit. Now I just come over. Scribblies. Scribblies. You gotta be confident in your scribblies. Now, I think I do want to use the pan pastel. After all, I'm going to go in here, load it up in the brush, 
just like I should, I'm gonna tap off the excess. And I'm gonna go over to the sky. Really gently. And just like magic. Soften up everything. I'm gonna leave certain bits untouched and I might go back in with the pink, but I think for now, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna make it look all misty. Do we like that? I'm not sure if we do. So, do I like that? Yes, but I think I want to emphasize these trees a little bit more. It's nearly just kind of like scraping away what's what was underneath in the first place. I think we might be done with that one. The only thing that I will add more of is pops of colour. So we can't be doing without pops of colour. So where I feel that there's just a lack of kind of contrast and spark seems like a crap way to say it, but it's kind of what I mean. There's just something I feel like there could be just something missing or something more could be added. I'm going to add in pops where I feel it is necessary. I feel like I'm not dragging up enough of the blue from down here and there's a bit of a disconnect. So we're going to pop more blue in. Nice having blue up in these trees up here and having them kind of like Look cool and stuff. And then we're going to do some blue here, sort of along the horizon. I wonder why that's a lot more than this. It's very I think, I think this blue is where it's at already. And then there's a gap here. I'm gonna fill that gap in. Just made it. Okay, I think we are done with this piece. This is the aftermath of the desk. <laughs> so let's stop this from shaking first of all. Let's zoom you in and take off this tape. I love how finalized and finished a piece looks when take the final tape off and then there's such a lovely neat border left <sighs> but that is it so let's give you a nice close-up of all the details And now all that's left is to sign and that's it that is an example of how i create a painting using mixed media and if you want to receive this original artwork you can sign up to my super sparrows tier on patreon but obviously no pressure to do anything like that. I hope you found this informative and useful at all. I think I am possibly the worst person at explaining things, but I tried. <laughs> I hope you at least liked seeing me walk through my entire process of painting. Um, I don't think I kind of did a proper thing like this before where it's like real time and I talk you through what I'm doing. But yeah. Hope you enjoyed <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Bye!